Everyone, my name is Morgana Sergei, and today we're going to talk about uh, package quality assurance. Uh, I have actually a lot to say, so um, uh, it is high chance that we will not be able to uh, ask any questions, uh, and so fasten your seatbelts. We are running. So I'm from uh, Russia, from a city called Yekaterinburg, which is placed near Ural Mountains, uh, and also we have a monument about border between Europe and Asia and I live with my wife and three dogs that were adopted and uh, one of them really missed me home. And I'm working in a company called Evil Martians. We are mostly focused on uh, driving your startup at warp speed. And uh, the only way we could achieve uh, such results is uh, open source, contributions and uh, open way of work, uh, which we call Cult of Martians. So to problem definition. Uh, as I said, uh, today uh, we built a business uh, software using a lot of open source dependencies. And let me show you some statistics about uh, Ruby open source. So here is the data about um, seventh uh, year, and uh, it's the usage <laughs> of uh, Ruby gems. So uh, the first line here is the uh, total usage of uh, open source Ruby packages. We have uh, here a community of uh, 90,000 uh, contributors and um, around 100,000 uh, projects. And um, it's look pretty okay, but uh, if we'll remove um, only one percentile here, uh, which I mean the 1% uh, of the most highly adapted project, uh, we'll see that actually a number of downloads uh, drops and uh, while the number of projects changed only by 1,000 and number of contributors also uh, mm -hmm. dropped drastically and uh, actually the problem uh, reveals when we see the uh, last line uh, where we have still 100 millions of downloads uh, of packages uh, while we have uh, more than uh, 100,000 of projects and number of contributors is much much less so we have less than uh, half of a developer per project. Uh, so what's the problem? <laughs> of course we have high demand, uh, lack of participants, and uh, especially in the uh, field of not highly adapted projects. So high risk of enterprise failures and of course high pressure over maintainers. Uh, also I want you to compare that uh, we have only less than half of maintainer per uh, not highly adopted project versus 20 contributors uh, for highly adopted projects. Uh, yeah, a couple of words why I'm doing such research. Uh, a while ago I created a project called Assert, it's open source and uh, it helps you whether you decide to add or remove some open source dependency. So uh, let me show you how it works. So this is the main page and uh, we see here a score about maintenance, about popularity of the project and maturity is just combination uh, of those uh, groups. We have metrics for each group and each metric has the score. Um, how the scoring system works, pretty simple. Uh, so uh, I've just gathered information about every open source project de uh, developed in Ruby, uh, measured the uh, metrics and divided values in five groups A to F. And then uh, I'll be able to uh, find the distance between current project values and uh, some of the group. The name of the group, actually the score. So it works for the metric and for a uh, group of metrics. Uh, and problem actually with the author, not the ranking system, but the names of the grades and marks uh, and the colors. So uh, actually when I created it, the idea was uh, to show amount of risk. So when you uh, use highly adapted software and the score is high, uh, there is a less chance of failure in production and also the higher chance that a uh, fix will be introduced soon. Uh, on the other hand, for a uh, low score, we have the opposite. Uh, but the problem here is that uh, such system encourages people uh, to more uh, focus on ad already adopted software, uh, which, which was proved and uh, which also has high quality. At the same time, the other project, and uh, there is a huge amount of them, uh, needs more support, needs uh, contributions, but people will not use them because uh, their score is low and it's unclear why some developer could choose uh, a project with a uh, low score.
So that's why uh, today we'll focus on the uh, what I call mid-sized projects, or the projects that uh, were not highly adopted because uh, for them uh, quality is the main issue and also uh, the lack of resources. So we need uh, a way to optimize their process to achieve higher quality. So uh, what uh, what is the way to solve the problem? Uh, at first, we need to understand what quality is and how we could measure it. Uh, then uh, we need some kind of risk risks model, uh, which will uh, show us how we could uh, actually action uh, in this field. So when we know risks and we know some measurements, we could uh, make decision about uh, how to behave in the process. So we could uh, improve uh, end user experience. Mm -hmm. So when I started, I found existing research, of course, and uh, hear my complaints about it. Uh, most of the papers were outdated, uh, another, another were too specific. And uh, that, that doesn't mean that uh, they were not good, but they were not, not applicable. Uh, but one thing worried me the most is the focus on similarities with appropriate software. So those papers tried to apply techniques from appropriate software to the open source. And uh, let me show you why it will not work, especially <laughs> to mid-sized projects. So let's say we have uh, some a business application. We have a customer which pays us money, which creates obligations, requirements, but at the same time gives us resources. So a customer uh, is the source of requirements. We could gather, uh, gather them and then uh, try to spend some of the resources to, uh, uh, to just check that uh, our software meets the requirements. So it's pretty simple, but if we try uh, to uh, do the same st the, the same uh, way in the open source. We'll see that no money, no obligations, and uh, no obvious requirements. Because uh, who are the customers if you don't know uh, who's in, uh, who's on stack? So uh, <coughs> the main problem also here lack of resources. How we could add here some uh, QA resources if we don't have resources for uh, development? Uh, remember, half of a developer per project. So. We need another possible solution. And I decided to go to the uh, region of the quality assurance to the manufacturing process. Uh, there are several techniques that could help uh, this could help us. And uh, they help manufacturers to uh, build better products. So the Six Sigma techniques uh, tell, tells us that improvement of product quality is a function of improvement production process. And also uh, Six Sigma tells us uh, which step we should take. Uh, looks like a framework. We have uh, a first step to define measurable quality. Uh, then or measurable goal, then we should actually measure the metrics, analyze them, and finally, uh, when we have data, we could uh, make some improvements. And uh, of course, after each improvement, we should control that action were successful. So another thing is the lean process, uh, is the evolution of the uh, Six Sigma, and uh, it's also added uh, some uh, important fact that uh, you should not only focus on the uh, process abroad, but uh, you should focus on reducing resource wastage. Uh, in uh, manufacturing process, uh, it was about time, so they wanted to spend less time uh, on product uh, production, so uh, they succeeded in that. So let's try to apply it. But before, oh yeah, uh, this. Uh, <laughs> moment uh, uh, lesson about risks. Uh, once I returned home and found that my dog uh, is near a ruined sofa. And I was surprised because she never behaved that way and I made the research. I found that uh, under the sofa there was old toy. And I also remembered that so many times I saw my dog sniffing uh, around. And uh, that was a lesson about uh, Risks. When you know your risks, you could control them, and also uh, you could be in the safe, on the safe side. So uh, that is why we should do risks analysis and stay on the safe side and uh, achieve better quality. So, uh, what do we need? Uh, we need uh, to build efficient process, a measurable quality definition, uh, and uh, analyze risks and, of course, waste optimization. So. Uh, let's take a look under the hood of the mid-sized project. Here is the statistics about, uh, again, top uh, op Ruby open source. I gathered it using the author. 
And uh, on the right side, you could see downloads or installed per, uh, average installs per project. And we see that uh, growth is exponential uh, between the level of adoption. So, so here is the uh, uh, person, buckets based on the percentile. So here we have uh, 1,000 projects, uh, here is 5,000 projects, and so on, as we have uh, more projects and less adoption in them. So uh, on the left side, for the same buckets, we have uh, uh, critical metrics about community behavior. And we see that uh, behavior uh, is not the same as the uh, growth of the uh, adoption. So there is uh, another law. Uh, about those uh, key metrics, and uh, it's somewhat called uh, hype cycle. Uh, and uh, the hype cycle describes us how any new technology adapt, uh, becomes adopted. And the uh, highly adopted open source software um, fits right there on the plateau of productivity. Uh, but uh, the mid sized projects uh, are spread uh, around uh, other part where we, we see different. Uh, crises in, uh, in the flow. So uh, this chart uh, helps us to understand that uh, to find the optimization or to find the uh, way to improve the quality, we need to split the uh, solution between uh, several parts. We need to uh, choose uh, one of them and then apply the framework from manufacturing and uh, that will give us a whole solution if we'll uh, sum it up. So let's start. The trigger stage is the uh, left part of the chart. When you just uh, invented so something and uh, those projects is pretty hard to discover. Uh, so quality for trigger stage is uh, pretty high in terms of manufacturing process because uh, you just create a library for yourself and of course you have a customer that is actually a developer so uh, also we need, uh, we need no optimization here. Uh, but uh, when, we, when the technology um, became more popular, uh, we have here some risks. And uh, we need to uh, get some popularization here because uh, actually if we want to uh, verify that uh, our project was uh, <laughs> make any sense, we need to have enough a number of users uh, who will say that, yeah, I, I will use it. So. Uh, let's say uh, we have here uh, for the project uh, 100 customers or users and still one developer. So uh, the quality could be uh, calculated here as the uh, function of uh, customers' growth, then uh, the, uh, <coughs> again, number of uh, defects or bug, bug reports, and in overall we'll see uh, the kind of quality of, these, uh, of the project on that stage. Uh, so let's try to understand the risks here. Uh, so key risks here is uh, uh, lack of interest and uh, ability to approve the work. So uh, of course on that stage we need to focus on uh, cultivating interest, so we need to write some articles or posts or at least sharing it with uh, friends and with others. Uh, and the other thing is uh, the feedback, especially negative feedback, we should uh, work on. But also we could uh, here optimize our resources. Uh, we could define initial requirements and just close, for example, half of the bug reports because uh, they uh, do not meet the initial requirements. <coughs> so we've got some optimization and if we fix the bugs, uh, fortunately we have uh, some growth and we have a stable number of users. So uh, we have here some modest adoption. Uh, we are ready for optimization because we closed many bugs till now and uh, we somehow proved the solution for a particular group of users. So uh, let's try to understand the quality on that stage. Uh, here we have uh, more number of customers. We still have around one developer and uh, for now, we are ready to focus on feature requests. Um, as I suggested previously, we were m mostly focused on bug fixes. And that means that we have a lot of open feature requests. And uh, that is why we should focus on uh, source quality. And sometimes, when you, uh, the amount of the adoption grows, uh, you also need to focus on solution optimization. So uh, let's try to understand the risks. The risk here, uh, here is sustainability because when you have 1,000 users, uh, you actually could not just uh, 
uh, <laughs> you couldn't just leave the project, uh, but uh, you could help other uh, maintainers and contributors uh, if you will decide actually to leave. Uh, so I suggest to write source documentation to cover this as a risk. And the second thing, make it right or uh, introduce here more features and also, uh, as I said, uh, improve the uh, source quality. Uh, by known techniques and uh, optimization here is also available it's the uh, it's available in case of overgrown scope when you don't know which of the features you could choose uh, you could define strict feature requirements so finally uh, if you you have uh, close enough feature requests and uh, made all these uh, actions so hopefully you will be on productivity stage and you're very close to the highly adapted open source software so somehow we've got to the uh, point where we could understand how to improve the quality of the mid-sized project uh, on each stage. Uh, also the idea that I expressed uh, right now pretty uh, briefly, uh, I expressed in the document called maturity model and I'll, show, uh, and I'll share them uh, in the end. And you could uh, try to <laughs> discover maybe something interesting for you. So, Let's try to define the quality overall uh, in measurable way. So measurable way is to say that uh, we could, we could uh, measure the community or adoption. We could measure uh, docs, <coughs> implementation, and support. So finally, we could uh, somehow create a tool uh, that will show us uh, some clue about uh, what quality of the project is, especially uh, as we know that uh, amount of research around the uh, documentation checks, implementation uh, quality checks is pretty huge. But I want you to focus on uh, another moment. Uh, it is the uh, idea that we could simplify our uh, function. Uh, if you'll say that actually implementation, documentation, support, this is all the community but n uh, not the growth of community, uh, it's the community behavior. Uh, that uh, leads us to a hypothesis that quality is just a function over the community behavior. Uh, but let's uh, try to understand uh, what our community consists of. Uh, community is actually the spectators uh, who just discuss the t technology but, never, but they never uh, use it and they maybe just share some uh, posts in, in Twitter or stuff like that. And users are actual uh, people who at least try to install your software. Bug reporters and contributors and maintainers is obvious. And I marked in gray the spectators and end users because actually we could not calculate uh, exact number uh, of those people. And why it's uh, important? Because overall it's the uh, whole size of community. And if you don't know the size of commu community, we couldn't have any clue about the conversion uh, from the uh, user to the, participa uh, to the participant in the open source community. But actually we have a clue. And here is the table about uh, bundle, bundler <coughs> conversion. And bundler is just uh, one of the packages in Ruby. Uh, and uh, here is the data about 16th and 17th year. So we see here uh, some revenue in the number of downloads per year. And also we see revenue ab about participants. So we see that the changes are different. So uh, participants' were, uh, growth were, was less uh, three times. <coughs> but uh, actually when you have 1,000 participants in your project, it, uh, it's not a problem. But let, uh, let's take a look on another uh, project. It uh, also has high adoption. So we have uh, during the year almost 1 million downloads only for that one project. The revenue well in uh, downloads per year is um, not, uh, not big, but uh, the number of participants in the project uh, decreased. And uh, actually, if we have here a trend, uh, maybe uh, it's time to some warning uh, or at least um, some mention for the uh, maintainers to take some actions. Uh, but it's not the case. The idea here is that actually we could measure our quality uh, and we could uh, uh, and if we could measure it, maybe we could even improve. So uh, here I want to introduce you the multi-agent systems. The multi-agent systems are semi-autonomous decision makers which cooperate to optimize the manufacturing process. Uh, why I mention them here? Uh, because at first they're again about manufacturing process and the second thing is that uh, because 
the uh, behavior in open source is uh, uh, is very similar to behavior in multi-agent system because uh, again we ma uh, everyone makes a uh, decision and uh, sometimes we try to cooperate to, optimi to optimize our process uh, but the uh, difference here is that uh, agent in the system has some prescription uh, how it should behave while in the open source we don't have any uh, restriction uh, or rules instead of one that in open source we could uh, leave the project whenever I like and uh, that means that uh, maybe it's time to introduce some uh, general prescription for the open source at all to uh, make it more obvious for uh, any participant even for a spectator or end user how it could uh, affect the uh, overall community behavior so uh, I introduce you all the open source enthusiast playbook uh, or uh, my interpretation of uh, smart open source agent behavior. So the idea here is that uh, you could kind of play uh, in the open source. Uh, you, you have uh, a framework how you should behave uh, in the open source field. So you should start from the problem. So let's say I want to know something about blockchain uh, because it's popular but uh, I don't have intention to create here something or in the end I just want to discover what blockchain is uh, so uh, I go to the uh, empathy axis and I'm here around the curiosity uh, <coughs> part and that means that uh, the role that I will choose preferably is the spectator or uh, user which, gives me, uh, which could give me the better experience uh, so the second axis uh, helped me to understand uh, the focus group of the project. So uh, you see here the names of the uh, maturity stages that we uh, passed. And uh, I just uh, want, uh, need to answer the question of what I'm interested in, in the innovation in some field or on efficiency innovation, some uh, scaling or stuff like that. So uh, when I make a decision on the crossing, I'll uh, get some, for me it is uh, those blocks. Uh, it's the uh, most interesting for me uh, uh, types of projects and uh, then I could uh, make a research, find uh, the existing projects and choose uh, the action. So for each role I have set of actions that uh, will help me or guide me uh, through the uh, open source interaction. And uh, for example for spectator it's uh, very important for uh, sharing your um, uh, <coughs> impressions uh, uh, over the, for example reading the documentation or uh, reading of some uh, article that was mentioned in your readme and stuff like that. Uh, uh, for example for the hype stage uh, another interesting topic is uh, the uh, problem demand and the <coughs> Uh, and the overall uh, interest in the uh, predictions of uh, future in this field and so on for any other role so uh, it will guide you uh, whether, uh, whether, uh, whether you decide to uh, contribute or uh, just to know something how to uh, have fun, how to uh, learn something and at the same time how to help open source community just as a side product another interesting uh, thing here is the uh, participants conversion so using the same uh, chart we, uh, we could find uh, the way to optimize uh, resources of maintainers as well so we uh, know that uh, which risks we have on each stage of the maturity uh, due to hype cycle. So we understand which uh, users are most wanted uh, group of participants and uh, we need to focus our efforts uh, to attract them to your project. So for example on trigger stage uh, for some blockchain uh, project I will prefer to uh, write some fancy readme, add here some maybe uh, movies or images and uh, it will uh, help me to uh, go to, to get to the hype stage. On the hype stage I should also introduce maybe some how-to's or different articles uh, that uh, shows how simple it's to install and to try uh, the particular solution and, uh, and so on. And uh, while we focus on the uh, particular group, uh, we grow the uh, more 
uh, harmonious solution, uh, more harmonious uh, community, which also will help us to, uh, in more uh, efficient way, to go to the uh, group of highly adopted uh, open source. So, uh, let's summarize. Quality is the function over the uh, community, implementation, docs, and support, and uh, Likely, we'll, we'll soon see a tool that will help us to measure the quality. The second is that we could try measure the uh, community using some uh, techniques, maybe one that uh, I've just introduced. And also, uh, introduce solutions for the problems that we have uh, in the beginning. The risk analysis, for risk analysis, we have maturity model that is uh, that I'll share in the end. And f as actionable model, uh, assistance to make decision which, for example, project to choose and or why, for example, I could uh, choose a uh, project with a low score on OSR uh, is the open source enthusiast playbook. And final thing is uh, I want to give a new life to the OSR. If you even if you don't work with uh, Ruby, I'll uh, ask you to go to the page, uh, take a look, and you find if you'll find uh, interesting the calculations or uh, representations. Uh, just share me uh, with me your uh, impressions. Share me, with me your uh, in issue uh, an issue, and um, I'll try to implement a, a sort in other on other platforms or for other languages. Thanks. This is the open source quality GitHub I/O, and tweet me in <laughs> here. SS Dolgana. So uh, thank you very much. Oh yeah. Does your model assume that is it, it seems like you're optimizing the needs of the contributors and, and the maintainers independently? But did you consider that if you optimize the, the path of the contributors, that the maintainers then become overloaded? And maybe there. I mean, maybe. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, that's why I've created the uh, maturity model, and uh, I have. Uh, Documentation that I need to even uh, describe more because uh, it shows the uh, pitfalls uh, like that that you described, uh, and uh, and it, it's actually solved during the uh, inside the uh, maturity model. You could just read through it, and and that's it. I'm uh, sorry, my time is up, but if you have questions, just tweet me, and uh, I'll answer you.